Find the moment at O due to the force at C. First thing we need to do is figure out what these points are. So point C is at 1.2 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and negative 1.1 in the z direction. Point D is given, that's 1.9, 0 0.4, and negative 1.7. Why would you do this? Because you need to be able to find the position vector from C to D in order to get the Cartesian form for C, that force. The position vector is D minus C, which is 0.7i, minus 1.6j, minus 0.6k. Now, we can't use that because it does not have length 1. We need the unit vector from C to D. That's where you take the position vector and divide by its length. So what is the length of the position vector? Here we've got a position, length of position vector of 0.7 squared plus 1.6 squared plus 0.6 squared. All of that under the square root gives you 1.8466. Now we can find the unit vector, which is the position vector divided by its own length, which is 0.7i minus 1.6j minus 0.6k divided by 1.8466. You can multiply that out, you get 0.37907i minus 0.86645j minus 0.32492k. Now, once you have the position vector and the unit vector, now you can say that the C in Cartesian form is its magnitude times its unit vector. That's C. Now we want to find the moment at O due to this force C. So what we've got is we've got some position vector from O to C. Now note, this R is not the same R as we had it before. Before we had the position vector from C to D. Now we have the position vector from O to C. This is 1.2i plus 2j minus 1.1k. People have trouble remembering which of these you use to find this moment. It's this one. So the moment at O is R cross C, where we're talking about R from the point to the point of application of the force. So from point O to point C. We're going to have I, J, and K on the top. R goes on the second line, and C goes on the third line. Once you've taken this cross product, you've got the moment at O.